Do you ever feel lost in a conversation with your teenager? <laughs> do you ever have conversations where you don't feel lost? Do you know something is off, but you can't quite identify it? And you certainly don't know what to do. So let's look at an example. I know a 17 year old girl, Alyssa, who for years has been a grab bag of trouble, rebellious, difficult at home, snotty attitude, smart mouth, ungrateful, grades dropping, irresponsible. These problems usually result in severe disabilities throughout adulthood, emotionally, in relationships, in careers, and more. But parents don't pay attention early. And so then they wonder when these kids are young adults or older adults, and the kids don't know how to do anything. And it's because we didn't teach them. We parents tend to respond only to emotional car wrecks later in life, or even while they're teens, instead of teaching simple principles that prevent the wrecks. Early on, each undesirable behavior seems small, so we justify them or blow them off. We say, yeah, it's just that age, she'll grow out of it, she's in a bad mood, I'm too tired to deal with this, uh, I can't do anything with her, go to your room one of those or some variation. We're ignoring the roots of emotional weeds that are springing up and choking the tender souls of our kids. If we ignore the weeds long enough, we can't save the plant anymore. We must pay attention to our children's feelings and behaviors early on, or the day will arrive when there's nothing we can do sooner, sooner than we think. What can you do to help your teenager? First, recognize what's happening. Mostly, we don't even see what our children are telling us with their words and behaviors. If you're learning something so far, hit the like or subscribe and make comments and hit the bell on YouTube and we'll just pour informative stuff over your head about how to raise your kids. Let's look at just one incident between Alyssa and her mother. Alyssa's attitude toward her siblings had become quite a problem. Criticizing, sniping, controlling, being snotty to the point that nobody wanted to be around her. One day, mom said she wanted to meet with Alyssa at seven o'clock that evening. Alyssa blurted out with quite an attitude. Again, another meeting? <laughs> mom insisted, and Alyssa demanded to know when the meeting would end. I don't want this thing to take up my whole evening, she said, spitting out words like bullets. Mom said, well, probably be done by 7.30. Alyssa huffed and puffed, but agreed. At seven o'clock, the two began talking, and Alyssa vigorously resisted everything mom was trying to teach her about feeling loved, being loving toward others, and being responsible. Real love principles the family had discussed many times before. At eight o'clock, an hour later, Alyssa stomped her feet and barked, stop talking. I actually called her a name. You're a hypocrite. You keep saying that schedules are important, but you've already gone half an hour over the time you promised. Mom suggested that they talk more the next day. Alyssa protested, so mom said, tomorrow we'll be meeting on Zoom with Greg, meaning me. Alyssa didn't like that, but she was curious because they'd never done that before. The next morning, I spoke with both of them by video. After hearing their stories, I smiled broadly and casually and said, Alyssa, you get quite a kick out of gaming your mother Immediately she said, what do you mean? <laughs> she knew what I meant. <laughs> Laughing, I said, you're kind of cute when you pretend not to, to understand me, but you know exactly what I mean. Pay attention to the tone I'm using with her. I'm not angry with her. Some of your behavior, I said, is unconscious, but I'll describe it to both of you. Mom, it's your job just to love and teach Alyssa, but without realizing what you do instead is you play the game that Alyssa has created. You allow her to game you. How does she do that? Mom asked. Alyssa has taught you that you must never inconvenience or irritate her. That's the number one rule in your relationship. Alyssa's entire focus is to do whatever she wants. Then she intimidates you into accepting her unloving behaviors. She does whatever it takes, snotty attitude and anger, for example, to make you afraid of her disapproval. It works, so she controls you. So you're telling me that I'm afraid of my own daughter? Oh, pff, yes. No parent likes to see the I hate you look on a child's face. You're afraid of that look. 
So you give her whatever she wants so she doesn't give it to you. When your meeting yesterday went long, a meeting that it was important for Alyssa's lifetime happiness, Alyssa stopped the meeting just with her anger at you. You kept the rule, Alyssa's rule, that you must not irritate Alyssa. You back down from her all the time, letting her get away with being unloving and irresponsible. So she keeps getting away with it. She's gaming you. Mom sighed and said, yeah, I do that. If I had been there, I said, and Alyssa had tried to berate me for going overtime, I would have laughed and said, kid, the only reason this meeting is going long is that you are being defensive and snotty. If you were listening, this meeting wouldn't have lasted more than two minutes. Listen to my tone. This is the tone you use with your kids. Mom said, I would never have thought to say that. Well, of course not. You were playing the game. I wouldn't play the game. I don't need her approval. I'm not afraid of her irritation or disapproval. And you're tired of the game, my dear. Mom was stunned to realize that she'd been tricked for so long. Alyssa looked a little surprised, too, that her secret manipulations, partly unconscious, had been finally revealed. Alyssa, I said, here are the game rules in your head. You don't mean to do them, but here are the rules, and they're etched in stone. One, I am entitled to get whatever I want. You really believe that. You were kind of taught that. Two, I can do whatever I want to get what I want. And three, anybody who gets in my way is the enemy, and then I can treat them however I want. Does that sound familiar? I asked. Alyssa <laughs> hung her head. <laughs> wow. Mom looked like she'd been freed from prison. The secret was out. For now, at least, the game was up. It was over. Most parents believe that they're obligated to satisfy their children's desires. They do. It sounds kind, but satisfying a child's desires often directly conflicts with what a child needs. This can become impossibly difficult for parents to navigate. Teenagers, on the other hand, have only one goal. Me. Themselves. Me. Give to me, don't bother me, serve me, don't get in my way, and give to me again. Simpler rules, yeah? And they become very good at getting what they want, since they have all the time in the world to focus on themselves and to manipulate their parents to play the game. Parents don't even know what the game is, so often from the beginning, they're doomed to lose. What nobody is seeing is that everybody who plays this game loses, both parents and teenagers, because with all the manipulating, nobody feels unconditionally loved. Nobody. Nobody is loving and nobody is responsible and nobody is happy. The game is fundamentally wrong. So what can you do instead of playing emotional games with your teens? Your responsibility as a parent is simply to love and teach, one word, your children, including your teenagers. What is the job of your children? To listen and to learn to feel loved, be loving, and be responsible. That's it. Those are the rules of happy living, and you must understand them so you can teach your children the attitudes and skills that will make them happy for a lifetime instead of playing the games where everybody loses. Learn the rules of life the principles that govern great parenting at reallovedparents.com. These rules work every time that parents really follow them. But boy, these rules are not for wimps. Effective parenting requires courage and faith. But if you have that and you do that, you will be happy. And so will your teenagers.